now like to invite dr prashant gangal pediatrician at bpn maharashtra he's been practicing uh, as a pediatrician mumbai and um, he's been a breastfeeding advocate trainer for over three decades now he's also been a mother uh, support training coordinator of bpni maharashtra since 1995 he's working closely with the government of uh, maharashtra and unicef for more than 20 years and has trained thousands of health and icds personnel in infant and young child nutrition has contributed towards shishu potion app rejuvenated breast crawl and gave concepts of hirkani room for the immunization clinic and navajat shishu i request you sir to please share your thoughts about bpni activities and uh, collaboration with gis the chance yeah, let me share my screen yes sir am i audible yes yes So may I request you uh, to join Yes. in the presentation okay i will speak without refusing to get started stay with us viewers we having a little yes, problem yes. with the tech yes sir no problem i'll just uh, not stop sharing the presentation okay uh, i speak without the slides there is some problem uh, with uh, you know putting up the presentation uh, at the outset i'm very honored to be in this august gathering and i thank uh, just for giving me this opportunity all the dignitaries present over here and the delegates attending this particular conference my topic today is how breastfeeding and complementary feeding affect child morbidity and mortality and how bpni maharashtra breastfeeding promotion network of india maharashtra branch can collaborate with gist on these particular issues what i have seen in my last 30 years of experience is that it is not important how many trainers you train it is not important how many health workers you train what is important is that how mothers at ground level start getting benefited from your activities so the focus should be on the final beneficiary i need not go into details of how breastfeeding and complementary feeding are important for infant health and child health we know that infant mortality rates and neonatal mortality rates though they are dropping in india they are still high though on death certificate different causes appear like for example diarrhea pneumonia and other causes what doesn't appear on death certificate is malnutrition and about 45% of deaths occur because of malnutrition directly or indirectly and this fact needs to be understood i will give you an example if you are able to successfully initiate breastfeeding within 1 hour of birth initiation of breastfeeding within 1 hour of birth we will be able to avoid 22% of neonatal deaths what we see as mortality or deaths is just the tip of the iceberg what we don't see is the effects caused by malnutrition and the diseases which occur the morbidity which occurs because of that it's not just about morbidity and mortality it is about the development of society as a whole if the child doesn't get appropriate nutrition and when this child grows into an adult this child will be mentally and socially have little subnormal 
and that will affect the performance of the whole society. A mother who was malnourished will give rise to a malnourished baby. So the cycle of malnutrition will continue. So this entire iceberg needs to be realized. So if we want to improve all these things, we need to improve the nutrition of children in first thousand days. Why first thousand days? Because in the first thousand days, the brain, the body, that means height-wise and weight-wise increases maximally. I'll give you an example. By two years of age, 75% of brain development is over. Though length-wise, the child has finished only 50% and weight-wise, only 20%. So what gets maximally affected is brain growth, which we don't see. Now, what are the steps that need to be taken over about this particular thing? Now, in uh, explaining this, I will use two words. One is Astra and one is Shastra. During the first few years of our activity, we use Shastra. Shastra is one which can be used by an individual at the most upon two or three people or very limited number of people. And as you know, the Astra is something which can be used by one person to affect millions and lakhs of people. So whatever measures we use should be like an Astra. So in the first phase of our activities of BPNI Maharashtra, we focused on Shastras. That is giving small, small tips to the health workers. But now what we have come out in the second phase is Astras. That means using those measures which will affect completely a large number of sections of the society. Now there are two types of these particular Astras. One Astra is where which is mainly hospital-based or maternity home-based. And second one is community-based. So starting with the maternity home-based or the hospital-based, the most important is baby-friendly hospital initiative. WHO and UNICEF in 1989 gave the principles of 10 steps to successful breastfeeding, which the maternity homes have to follow. But unfortunately, since they have not been included as mandatory by governments and included along with the registrations for the maternity homes, they are not being followed. So following 10 steps to breastfeeding and by promoting the maternity homes or I would say forcing them to become baby friendly would help greatly in improving the start of breastfeeding, the initiation of breastfeeding. So samskar hone chahiye bachche maak aur maak ke upar wo pehle teen din mein, char din mein hote hain aur jo samskar waha pe ho jayenge wo agle do saal, first thousand days tak continue rehenge. So those samskars are done by baby friendly hospital initiate. I'm not going into details because lack of time. The second most important astra is four-dimensional immunization clinic. The situation of complementary feeding or the food which is started at six months of age along with continuation of breastfeeding is the situation is worse than that of breastfeeding. You'd be surprised to know that not even 10% of children's population get appropriate diet. And that is one of the things which we have to really focus on. And you would ask me why this happens? You'd be surprised to know that nobody ever ask the mother that what she is giving and makes an analysis on the basis of food groups. The whole concept of carbohydrate, proteins, and fats is gone. What we are looking at is food groups. And these 10 food groups, initially there are seven, including breast milk, it becomes eight. And as BPNI Maharashtra, we added three more. So somebody has to audit children's diet. And the best opportunity for this is the vaccination clinic. So when child comes to immunization, the first thing that should be done is diet audit and growth monitoring, and both should be correlated. If growth chart goes up, why it has gone up? If it goes down, why it has gone down, that needs to be analyzed. So uh, this is the first step. Second is development. Has the child started turning over? Has the child started sitting? Has the child started standing? So these are the few important things which have to be asked to become mental retardation and other delays. Then what are the drugs that mother is supposed to consume? Who will ask about calcium and iron being taken by the mother? Who will give contraceptive advice to the mother? Because quite a few times the second child comes in too early and that causes malnutrition in the elder baby. And the last one is dose. If any doctor or nurse is lifting up these hands to give vaccination without going into the first three, I think it is a crime of great magnitude. So that needs to be addressed. There are a few other astras which are not as important as these two, but I'll just enumerate them. Something like uh, baby-friendly, you uh, uh, know, labor room. What we call labor room is an old concept. What we introduce the concept of Naujat Shishu Agaman Kaksha. The best 
room in any city or any town in the world should be where the baby, the new citizen arrives and where mother should feel that, yes, that was the best place I was ever in. So her mentality, her psychology needs to be maintained. Then baby-friendly NICUs, the newborn care units, where mothers need to be admitted right in the NICU or next to the NICU, and a lot of friendly policies have to be followed in over there. Then at the social level, we need to make social awareness. I'm glad to know that Mr. Sanjay, uh, who is a part of the GIST, Kimbone, Mr. Kimbone, uh, the TCS and KM Hospital along with BPNI Maharashtra, have generated an app called Shishu Potion. And this is being widely followed in Maharashtra because it is in India also, because it is available in three languages. The mothers should be counseled at the community level by forming mother support groups. And we need to follow up children. You'll be surprised to know that in many maternity setups, when the child gets discharged, the next follow up to the child is half month. And between the discharge and the one and a half months follow up, is something like a blank screen. And that is where the maximum damage occurs. So we need to address that also. And we need to address follow up between 42 days, that is the first vaccination till the end of two years by frequent diet audits. All in all, the most important thing we felt and which is a still a far outside dream is that we need dedicated counselors in infant and gen child feeding. You'll be surprised to know that though this is a, such an important topic, there are no universities in the world which offers diploma or degree in lactation counseling, breastfeeding counseling, or complementary feeding counseling. If there is an orthopedic hospital, we need to have physiotherapists to help the patients. If there are no physiotherapists and occupational therapists, the knee transplant will become useless. And similarly, if there is a maternity in a home, there has to be a lactation counselor or consultant. And that concept is lacking. So we need to start from scratch, and this is where GIST comes in. Not just baby-friendly hospital initiative, not just four-dimensional immunization clinics, but also seeing to it that there are dedicated lactation counselors or breastfeeding counselors and complementary counselors and consultants. And the university courses, which will take care of providing such an intellectuals and ultimately uh, providing job opportunities for them. So this is in just what we feel that areas where just and BPNI Maharashtra can collaborate. And ending with a small hymn, Shira Neera Nidiste Stu Stanayok Shira Purakaha Sadaiva Subhago Balo Bhavatesha Bhavala Shira Neera Nidiste Stu Let the stock of milk, of food and water in your breast be sufficient enough so that a baby can become a Mahabali. Not just Mahabali like Bhim and Anuman, but to be like Panchakanya is also the concept of Panchakanya. And Payom Rutasamam Pitva Kumaraste Shubhanane this blessing to the mother, just like God's achieved immortality by eating and drinking Amrut, you, but you feel uh, by drinking your milk, let the baby also become immortal. And this is the message which has been given by our India, our Bharat, uh, thousands of years ago. And they should be written on the walls of every maternity home. And this blessing should be there on the outside of every pediatric clinic. And if it is followed in mind and spirit, I'm sure that Sashakta children, Sashakta will ultimately give rise to Sashakta Bharat. Thank you so much.